So far, so good. But the air conditioner weighs about a hundred pounds. How will we get it up on the roof? We've got power at the circuit breaker. We don't have power at the AC unit. Don't know why. So this is something that might be useful for another Bigfoot owner to know. Yes, actually. It's the 4th of July and we unexpectedly had a package waiting for us at the mailbox this morning. Very unexpectedly. We thought it was coming Tuesday. But apparently they delivered it on Sunday. All right. Does it have everything we need or not? Oh my goodness. That looks like the outdoor bracket. I think. So far, so good. But the air conditioner weighs about a hundred pounds. How will we get it up on the roof? We're going to try to lean this thing up on the ladder and I'm going to go up and use this to help pull it up and you're going to push. And where did you learn this trick, Charles? From a guy on the internet, YouTube. So at long last, the air conditioner is all hooked up and Charles pushes the button on the remote and nothing happens. He takes apart the interior unit and starts investigating. Then he digs into the electrical system on the Bigfoot RV. We've got power at the circuit breaker. We don't have power at the AC unit. Don't know why. Found the problem with the air conditioner. There's a junction box back behind the refrigerator here. And there's a wire, the wire goes from the circuit breaker to the junction box and the junction box up there. And they're not hooked up in the junction box. That's good news, right? That's very good news, hopefully. Would you say these wires were not connected on purpose or by accident? On purpose. So this is something that might be useful for another Bigfoot owner to know. Yes, actually. So go ahead and explain. If you buy your trailer, or probably any Bigfoot, without an air conditioner, they will probably come pre-wired for an air conditioner. But the wire 
does not necessarily go directly from the circuit breaker to the air conditioner. There's a, in this particular model, there's a junction box in the back of the uh, refrigerator compartment. And the wires are not connected there. So you need to connect those wires before you'll be able to turn your air conditioner on. We have cold air coming out of that hole. <laughs> It's done! If you would like to know how we like our new air conditioner, please put your questions in the comments and check back after we've had a chance to get to know it better. But for now, we can say that we bought it because it was supposed to be much quieter than most units, and also because it has a heat pump to make it more efficient. And so far, we are thrilled that it's at least as quiet as we hoped it would be. The next morning started with a big load of sand, so we got to work on the trickiest part of burying the cisterns. First, Charles made a custom tool for shoving the fill underneath the grooves in each water tank. Don't eat the sand. Come on, man. Yeah, I'd say it's good this way and this side needs to come up just a hair. Why are you putting sand in our water tanks? It's a center section that gets filled with sand. It makes a column of sand in the middle of the tank. Just for strength. Don't worry, that's not where the water goes. Moving sand was slow and tedious, and we only got halfway through situating the second tank before the rain drove us indoors. But that project will keep for a while. So the next day, with long-awaited parts finally in hand, Charles turned his attention to finishing the solar equipment shed. He added a vent to each gable end, along with two more in the soffit behind the wall containing the inverter and batteries. Before covering the vents, we painted the shed, or at least we painted as much of it as we could before the paint ran out.
one more quart should finish the job, but until then, the water tanks should keep us busy enough. And I almost forgot to tell you, our yurt kit is on its way here from Pacific Yurts in Oregon. It should be here in another week, and we can't wait to get started on it.